Who hasn't heard of the famous book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Almost everyone has heard of it or come across it at one point or another, isn't it? The truth is that this book is a must-read for anyone looking to gain control of their financial success, a kind of knowledge often not taught within the four walls of any school. Building wealth involves developing good habits, and Robert Kiyosaki takes us on a journey to discover these habits. Welcome back to my channel. Join me as I share eight things I learned from Kiyosaki's rich dad, poor dad. Let's get started. Number one, rich people don't work for money. To begin, wealthy individuals don't earn their wealth through direct labor. In comparison, those in the middle and lower classes do the opposite their whole lives. Rich people allow their money to work for them. Robert and his friends learned this first principle by working for his rich dad. The path to wealth doesn't usually involve working solely for someone else. The business owner typically becomes wealthy. Therefore, investing extensive hours in a job for someone else may not lead to financial prosperity. Now, I'm not saying you should quit your one job. Instead, while maintaining your daytime position, focus on acquiring valuable assets, tangible assets, not liabilities. When you work for money, you empower your employer. However, when money works for you, you retain power and control. Number two, understanding financial education. Robert Kiyosaki continually criticizes the traditional schooling system for failing to instill financial literacy in its students. Instead of focusing on practical financial education, schools prioritize academic courses, leaving us with little to no knowledge about financial literacy. And guess what? He's right. Looking at our education, you can see that managing money is hardly ever covered. We're left to figure it out on our own, and that's not always easy. Schools are more interested in preparing us for regular jobs, which means we graduate with a mindset that revolves around finding a stable job and getting a monthly paycheck. But that approach doesn't teach us much about generating wealth in other ways. It stops us from developing critical thinking skills. Did you ever have a class discussing the importance of economic systems, wealth inequality, or the impact of financial verdicts? Probably not. Instead, we're often told to cram information for exams without understanding the concepts. Schools often discourage people from making mistakes and taking risks, even though those are key traits for developing an entrepreneurial mindset. According to Kiyosaki, we need a different approach to formal education. We should focus on fostering entrepreneurial thinking. A person can be highly educated in their profession, but still be financially illiterate. Hence, integrating financial education into life is essential. Number three, the concept of debt. In our world today, acquiring debt has become a part of life for most people, whether for buying a home, buying a car, or funding education. One of Kiyosaki's key lessons is his cautionary advice against falling into the trap of accumulating detrimental debt. He contrasted how his rich dad and poor dad approached financial obligations. The poor dad clung to the conventional wisdom of avoiding debt altogether, considering it a financial evil to be shunned. In contrast, the rich dad advocated for a refined understanding of debt as a tool that, when used wisely, could accelerate wealth creation. Robert Kiyosaki challenges the notion that all debt is bad and distinguishes between good and bad. He says good debt builds wealth, involving loans for income-producing assets like real estate, businesses, or investments. This type of debt can yield positive cash flow, tax benefits, and appreciation. On the other hand, bad debt is used for non-income generating items such as credit card debt or car loans, hindering wealth building and causing financial stress. Recognizing this distinction is vital for financial success. Number four, knowing the difference between assets and liabilities. Actual assets are businesses that operate independently of your direct involvement. Own them but let someone else manage them. If your efforts are required, it's a job, not a business. Examples include stocks, bonds, income generating real estate, and royalties from intellectual properties like music, scripts, and patents. Any valuable asset that generates income appreciates and has a ready market falls into this category. A good example of this is real estate. 
buy a house and keep it on rent, then pay the loan through rent. Now you have a big asset in the form of real estate. You can sell it when it appreciates or keep it on rent. Wealthy individuals invest in assets, while less affluent people often acquire liabilities, mistakenly thinking they are assets. An asset adds money to your pocket. It generates income. In contrast, liabilities deplete your funds. It's crucial to comprehend this distinction. Purchasing an expensive house, often perceived as an asset, can be a liability. The monthly EMI payments and associated expenses can create financial strain, potentially hindering investment opportunities when there's available discretionary income. The wealthy accumulate wealth by consistently saving and reinvesting their savings, capitalizing on the compounding effect. Opting for an expensive house can hinder this process, diverting resources from reinvestment and income generation. Unlike easily liquidated assets such as jewelry, selling a house is not typically swift, making it more of a liability than a readily accessible asset. Number five, learn to be bold and decisive. In the real world, the bold, rather than the solely smart frequently forge ahead. Beyond college, success isn't exclusively determined by grades, but by guts and audacity. The path to success is often hindered by excessive fear and self-doubt despite personal genius. Financial acumen demands both technical knowledge and the courage to take risks. Our most potent asset is our mind. Remarkable opportunities are perceived not with your eyes, but with your mind. It's not gambling if you understand the terrain. It becomes a gamble when you throw money into a deal and hope for the best. Seek opportunities others have overlooked. Raising capital doesn't always demand initial funds. Strategic ways exist to secure it. Surround yourself with intelligent individuals for advice, choosing those who surpass your intelligence. Number six, understand the tax code to help you minimize your taxes. Everyone knows that taxes detract from personal wealth, but most people don't bother to find out how they can minimize the taxes they pay. There are many ways this can be legally achieved. One way to reduce taxation is to invest your money through the coverage of a corporation. If you invest through your corporation, your money is taxed much more leniently than in your name. In the United States, corporations come with other benefits too. For example, Debts and liabilities are placed in the corporation's name, not the owner's, which ensures against limited losses on investments gone awry. When you're an employee, you earn, get taxed, and then try to live on what's left. When a corporation protects you, you earn, invest, or spend as much as possible, and then get taxed on what's left. It's no surprise that corporations can help people get rich very quickly. There are other ways to minimize your taxes too. It's just a matter of educating yourself on the many loopholes and benefits of the tax system. For example, because of Section 1031 of the Internal Revenue Code of the United States tax system, if you sell your current real estate assets to buy more expensive ones, the government delays taxing your new real estate until you liquidate the property. This means your capital gain increases, while the government refrains from taking anything from you until later. By becoming aware of how the system works in your country, you may be able to reduce how much money the government takes from you legally. Number seven, overcoming obstacles. The critical difference between the rich and the poor lies in how they handle the common roadblocks in life. Kiyosaki highlights these roadblocks as fear, cynicism, laziness, bad habits, and arrogance. Overcoming these hurdles is crucial for financial success. Fear, for many, Losing money is so intense that they choose to play it safe and avoid risks, aiming for a balanced life. People with low incomes may experience losses in their investments. At the same time, the rich often face setbacks, manage risks, and view failures as lessons for future success, ultimately becoming winners. There's a significant distinction between disliking loss and fear of losing money. Most opt for a safe approach due to fear not actively pursuing victory. Interestingly, those with a balanced approach do not consistently achieve outstanding success. In reality, many affluent individuals are unbalanced, but intensely focused. Cynicism. 
This involves self-doubt and negativity, leading to thoughts of impossibility. Instead of blaming external factors, recognize that the issue may lie within yourself. Transform your mindset from impossible to positive and consider changing your approach to overcome challenges. Overcoming laziness. The recipe is to embrace a little greed, not an excessive amount. Saying I can't afford closes the mind while asking, how can I afford it? Opens up a world of possibilities, opportunities, and thoughts, encouraging continuous progress. It spurs you to action and forces you to exceed your limits. Overcoming bad habits. Our lives reflect our habits more than education. Adopt paying yourself first, paying others later each month. This motivates you to fulfill obligations to others and sparks creativity in meeting those commitments. Overcoming arrogance. Arrogance often stems from ignorance. Many individuals lack a deep understanding of what they discuss in the financial industry. If you sense ignorance, strive to improve. Arrogance can lead us to disregard the importance of things we don't know, causing potential problems. Number eight, pay yourself first. You've probably heard this a thousand times or more, but the truth is that it's not as simple as it sounds, as many people still struggle to commit to paying themselves first. So what does this mean? The concept pay yourself first holds that before you allocate money to bills, expenses, or other financial obligations, you should set aside a portion of your income for personal savings and investments. I find this concept like a test of character, discipline, and commitment, and it's one of the reasons I admire it a lot. The secret here is that paying yourself first is like psychology required in a determined person to become rich. As Robert Kiyosaki says, following this rule is more of a matter of self-discipline than anything else. Paying yourself first helps you prioritize asset accumulation and investments. Unlike the traditional financial advice we all know, which emphasizes meeting expenses, paying bills, and saving whatever is left, if any, Kiyosaki's approach flips this idea completely, advocating for a proactive approach to wealth creation. This principle will not only help you reshape how you manage money, but will also help you commit to your long-term goals. The book Rich Dad, Poor Dad teaches us many things that are not limited to financial success, but can also be applied in every aspect of our lives. Which of these lessons do you think is more important? Are Robert Kiyosaki's points practicable? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about this topic? Let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Finance Zoom channel. I'll see you in the next video.